Whitney Gardner. Gardner. See, I'll have to get used to Gardner because guess what? Today we're representing you. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> I, you know, this is one of these weird podcasts. This is what, what I actually love about my what I do, and I also love about the art world, is that Whitney Garner comes into my gallery today to just look at art, I guess, right? Oh, to yeah. drop off a painting, actually, right? Well, not here. I dropped off a painting. Not, not in yes. here, no, clearly yes. not. Yeah. But, but at yeah, the Mountain Oyster Club. I woke up this morning thinking I'm going to just go see some Maynard Dixon paintings. Yeah. <laughs> and you woke up in a tent, too, right? Yeah, I was camping in the Catalina Mountains and stayed in a tent for two nights so I could play an air paint and just you know, get out of my routine. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I been, Where were you camping? Were you over on the far side of... Uh, the, just the state park, the Catalina State Park. Okay, Catalina State Park. Yeah, yeah it's, it's beautiful, right? right there in town, but yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. And yeah. so did you get some good stuff, some good plein air paintings? Yeah. Of the Catalinas? Yeah, one needs to be completed in the studio, but the other two... All right. I know I like. where those might go. Well, there you go. <laughs> so you wake up in a tent, mm -hmm. and you're going to come see some Maynard Dixons, mm -hmm. And you're going to drop off a painting for the Mountain Oyster Club, right? I did already. You did that? Yeah. All right. I have an opening tonight in Scottsdale. And, and you have an opening tonight. Okay. So that's the, we're going to, we're setting the pace of what's happened here yes. with Whitney. That's why I'm in Tucson. Yeah. And then my, I walk in the door and my son goes, you should see, my son works at the gallery and he does sales and he has a great eye, I think. And he goes, uh, dad, you should probably look at this. And he, <laughs> <laughs> and he hands me his phone. And I start going through, scroll, 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 scroll. It's like, wow, this is all great, 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 great. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, that's cool. And I just, you know, find out a little bit about you. Not much, really. No. no. Didn't need to. And I said, you want to, uh, be, you know, are you looking for representation? And you said... Yes. Yes. Of course. Yeah. But I don't ever do that, which so that's what makes that. I mean, not ever. That does happen occasionally. Occasionally, rarely, something just is so clearly, uniquely done and well done that I don't need to even know what your background is other than I can see it in the art. And it was clear that that was there and is there. And so I said, okay, you want to, you, you're looking fine. I'll represent you. I said that even before I think we discussed really anything. Um, yeah. Yeah. I said it right away. Which, yeah. yeah. I think that's how it is. Maybe that's how it is with a lot of things. If you really, if you really love art and you're, um, and you have seen enough that you can just go, wow, that's it. I'm sure that happens all the time to certain galleries. And I gave the, analogy of the voice when you watch that and mm -hmm. you know the somebody sings like two bars and they three people hit their buttons turn around because they can just hear it right and i saw the same thing in your work i know literally nothing about your background which makes this super fun other than that you went to uh and i found this out afterwards didn't matter to me that you graduated from cca right mm -hmm. in oakland in yeah. 2010 yep and that's a fantastic school. Josh uh, Gibson went there and graduated from there, and uh, Dennis Saminski did as well. And I'm probably missing somebody else, but I, you know, it's a great, great school. Now I've talked a lot, yeah. more than I ever talk when I first <laughs> start. <laughs> but I'm excited, and I just wanted to blurt it all out there while it was there. So, what do you think? What's how's and then I said, oh, can you come in and do a podcast? Yeah. it wasn't yes. even that. And then it's like, yes, would you do it? And which is also a lot to ask, actually, from somebody to do. But you were like, yeah, I can do that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll try not to be so much like a deer in the headlights. <laughs> Just, You're not. I but, can tell. Okay. It's a lot coming at you. I know. Well, I'm thankful. And yeah. thank you for, yeah. for looking at my work and oh, yeah. having me here. Yeah. No, I see it. And I think that's important for people who are out there who think, oh, I can't ever get into a gallery or this is a hard road, they always turn me down or whatever, that you just got to keep crunching away and working at it because, you know, this is, again, 12 years you've been working. I mean, there, it sounds like you've done some other things with your house, but you've been working for more than 10,000 hours after yeah. graduating, mm -hmm. and that's what it takes. Yeah. Yes. So tell me about yourself. Where are you from? 
Now I'm going to find out okay. who I just invited to be a yeah, part of my am I? gallery. Yeah. Um, I was born in Santa Ana, California. Oh, I know Santa um, Ana. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was raised in Corona. In where? Corona? In Corona. I used to go fishing in Corona. Yeah. Well, yeah, when that was still Impossible. something happening, yeah, it's now just so developed. And Is that different. right? Yeah. There was a little, a little pond. It was the mil. I was in the military, and there was a mm. little pond that we could get in, just the military. Hmm. That was in Corona. You probably never heard of it or know about. My grandpa said that he used to go to Corona to duck hunting and different yeah, things when he was same pond. when he was younger. Lake. So that it used to be more of like a marshland. Yeah, yeah. So you grow up in Corona in, in LA, yeah. basically, is what you. What, how would yeah. You, well, it's what not do you describe it? It's so not LA, much. It, but they it's, call it the Inland Empire. Inland. Okay, so it's Inland. Um, but. Um, a fantastic place, but I never really connected with the area. So as soon as I was 18, I left home. Like I graduated from high school and left and went and lived in the foothills of the Sierra Nevadas in yeah. Sonora and, um, knew I wanted to go to college. Um, when, before you left home, let's just ask a few questions. Yeah. And that would be, were you interested in art when you were like in, in that time frame, yeah. grade school and high school, junior high? Yeah. 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 Um, I sort of discovered that I wanted to be a painter from like a little leaflet mm. pamphlet that of like some it had some Vincent Van Gogh paintings uh -huh. on it, and that I studied that over and over. That's all like I really had because I wasn't really exposed to um, art books or anything like that. My parents weren't very um, artistically inclined. Yeah, what well, did they do? My dad worked in construction, mm -hmm. um, and my mom was a stay-at-home mom, and now she actually is in the construction industry doing mm. building houses and stuff like that. Um, I had aunts and uncles that were artists professionally. But oh, really? Yeah, my, um, my aunt was a sign painter. So, mm -hmm. you know, like do donut shops and all right, that right. And stuff, and um, she did cartooning, and I had that influence when I was young, and I knew that you could have a job doing that. Um, but I didn't really have a whole lot of like exposure at a young age. Like I didn't go to my first art museum until I was about 15 or something. Wow. So, and was that because a, the, there was nothing that the schools would do it? Usually at least in a fairly metropolitan city, you would think the schools would take you to some museums, but nope. Not any <clears throat> art museums. No. no, no. And the first time I went was the Getty. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's, a, that's quite the. Yeah. My friend's parents were like, oh, you like to paint? You're an artist? Let's go to the Getty. And that was the first time I was exposed to any of that. I was just mind blown. Yeah. What is yeah. that? What's that like for you? Do you remember? I mean, I had no, I didn't know what medieval art was. Right. And I just didn't know. And I saw the dates of these paintings. I was like, is that right? You know, is it that old? <laughs> you know, like just really couldn't right. sort that out. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it definitely put me in a different place going, wow, you know, that's what a painting is. That's what a painting is. And were you taking art classes as far as in high school mm -hmm. and junior high and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you were you were yeah. kind of, you knew that was what you wanted to do, you yeah. think? Yeah. And were you winning any little contests or things, right? Tell me about that. Um, yeah. Um, even in elementary school, it was seen by some of my teachers and, you know, supported and I think in junior high, I did a, I won a contest. I think it was Black History Month, and I did a drawing of Bob Marley freehand or something, yeah. and it was uh, impressed my dad. He said, "You just drew that. You didn't do a grid or anything." I was like, "No," and I won some prize for that. And through high school, I was in, um, you know, whatever group um, shows that they would do, you know, every now and again, and I win some prizes there or right. won an award or something, right. you know, so. It's critically important, I found, after interviewing so many artists, that that ignition, something happens. Usually it's about um, some grade school is usually when I see it, mm -hmm. but it can be middle school, that they win a prize or, they, or, 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 or people go, oh, look at this person. There's something special. And that sends them on the journey. Sure. Yeah. Even as a kid, you're like, well, I'm, I did better than these kids, you know? Right. Like, and you can see it sometimes like in the classroom, you're like... I think I'm pretty good at this. Right. Thank you. Whatever I'm doing, it looks good, and that's encouraging. Yeah, yeah, they encourage you. You feel good, and so you put the effort and energy into it to make because you see yourself as that person. I think 
yeah. think that's what happens. Yeah. And that's why it's so critically important for us to have arts in the, you know, early in grade school, middle school and high school. Because well, there's a lot of artists that get shut down that never would, you know, never become sure. an artist just because they didn't have any encouragement. Sure. You know, and your parents are literally uh, not in that field at all. They don't see it. No. Um, I think I had to do like a book report when I was in fifth grade yes. and I just did a painting. I found some uh -huh. Halloween yeah. face paint in the right. cupboard and I did a painting of the book cover. And from that, my parents were like, oh, this kid needs some paint. So the following Christmas, they got me a, a, a set of like acrylic paint and brushes, uh, which just <laughs> set me on my way. I couldn't um, stop. How old were you then? When that ten. Happened? Oh, you were 10. Yeah. yeah. So that's when it is. So they, they saw it and, and yeah. were into it. Yeah. And then so high school comes. You go, okay, I'm going to graduate. Uh, you go to the Getty and when you're 15. Mm-hmm. That yeah. really sets. Did you start going to galleries or to art museums after that? My it, I became open to it. Like yes. I, you know, didn't really even know that there was galleries or a scene in L.A. or any right. of that. So, um, I did when I was in high school start going to different L.A. openings and right. um, which was all in like a field of art that wasn't really speaking to me. It was all maybe more abstract or con contemporary, right. you know, but it was just interesting to be in that um, environment and right. kind of be like, oh, these are, these are artists, you know, like <laughs> me as a kid, you know, just making that connection. Right. Exactly. And then, so when you graduate from high school, you go, I'm, and this is in Corona. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you, you, did you want to go to college or go get an art degree or what was the, the initial? Well, yeah, my uncle, who was also like a father to me, um, early when I was in high school, he said, you're going to college. And I was like, well, that's for smart, rich kids. And he's like, why don't you think you're smart? And uh -huh. he said, you have to get your grades up and this is what you're going to do. And I went back to school and started getting straight A's just because he encouraged. Yeah. yeah. And he saw and said, it's OK, you are smart. You just need yeah. some effort. Yeah. I just, you know, you just. Your perception of the world's really skewed right. when you're young. Yeah. Um, Boy, that's for sure. Yeah. And so his encouragement, um, he's, he got all the information he could from all the schools in California. Yeah. Every time I went to visit, he would have a pile. Okay, we're going to go through and we're going to wow. figure out what school you want to go to. And I was like, I really want to go to art school. You know, like this is, this is what I want to do. And I really um, was drawn to like um, – San Francisco Institute of Art and all, you know, mm -hmm. all that and just felt like that's where I wanted to be. And I was also really into like the beatniks and like, you know, the whole San Francisco right. poetry and, you know, that right. all floating in my mind, even though that was very much in the past, but still 1967. something. 1967. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something that I was sort of really into at the time. So I'm like, I want to go to San Francisco yeah. and be an artist, you know. Right. And so... You applied for schools, and well, what happened? When I, I had I had the grades to get into any school I wanted, um, That's good. and had scholarship. You know, I could have done anything, but I felt like, well, I'm not going to go to an art school, and because I wanted to go to an art school with, to get a degree, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I don't want to um, pay for math and science, all the same stuff you need for a BA, right? at an art school because I knew that would be expensive. So I chose to go to a community college and get all that, yeah, get that out general of stuff done. Right. And that's why I moved to Sonora. There was, my grandparents lived about 30 miles away and there was this great little community college like just stuck into the woods mm -hmm. and it just was such a great experience. And that's where I went and learned to be an adult. I lived on my own. I supported myself. Oh. I paid all my schooling by myself. And where was this? In what? Sonora. Where is that exactly? So it's, I guess it's nearest to Yosemite, okay. about 45 minutes from there. Oh, it's yeah. just in the foothills. It's this beautiful oh, yeah. old gold mining town. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. And so you went to community college. You got your undergrad, no, your, what, your it would associate. Be AA, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what? And then. Um, and you matured. Yeah. Right. Were yeah. you painting or drawing or doing yes. anything during that time frame, by the way? Yeah, I was also working like part time as I'm a sure. mentor for children at a women's shelter. Oh, nice. And doing art with them. Yeah. So, like, I tried to find jobs where I was doing art. art. Nice. Um, and then doing it also for more for um, assignments in my community college art classes, mm -hmm. you know. 
not as much doing it, my own exploration. Right. But you were doing it. But I was doing it, yeah. Um, so when I finished with my AA, I had no money, and I thought I needed to do something and make some money before I go into, you know, a private school. I right. just had no money. So on Craigslist, I found this great family in Oakland that needed a nanny. Mm. So I found I, I it was an, a live-in nanny situation. So I found a place to live and a job all in one nice. and the greatest, nicest family. Actually, the boy that I was a nanny for baron is like one of my greatest collectors because uh -huh. i gave him i made him artwork then and now right. still he's like mom buy me this piece and his his room has all my paintings uh, in yeah it. that's very cool uh -huh. yeah and so I, was, I did that for about a year and a half and, and saved up and um then applied to cca right and got in and that's in oakland right mm -hmm. yeah that's in oakland and san francisco that at the time they had right. two campuses and then you I know they have different uh, tracks at NCCA, and yours was fine art? Yeah, I was going for painting at the beginning. Um, and this is just my own experience. I'm not saying anything about CCA, but it was more conceptual than I was expecting. Yes. And I was really hoping to um, learn technique and kind of more traditional approach, which that was not um, in the curriculum like, mm -hmm. at all. I even had some teachers, you know, I'd say, oh, how do I approach this? I'm kind of nervous and not really sure how to, like, capture the light on this. And they said, oh, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, great teachers, and they were all inspiring. And, uh, you know, I'm so glad I went right. to that school. But at the same time, you know, I learned a lot about art, but I don't feel like I learned so much about how to make art. Right. Yeah. And That's that was just my own experience. And has that changed, you think, since then? Um, at CCA? No. Oh. That you've learned to make art now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. And yeah. still learning, yeah, of course. Of course you are. And that, so, and you do that to, you graduate in 2010, mm -hmm. and it was that with a uh, fine arts degree? Um, I actually switched my major to community arts, because like I'd said, I had done all these jobs working with right, children, right. and um, and I kind of thought, well, it'd be a good skill to learn grant writing. Right. And then be able to do like big projects with kids. Sure. Um, and then I still had an emphasis in painting. So I got the same amount of credits that I would if I majored in painting. Got it. Yeah. So that I can get and that What experience. kind of art were you interested in at that time? Were you doing landscape stuff or I, I for did yourself, this, for you? Yeah. Um, what I was doing was the collection of roadside memorials. Oh, that's cool. So I was getting the landscape in there, even like, though I didn't know I was going towards Like crosses that. with little... Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's um, really interesting. Just, you know, living actually in Sonora, all those backcountry roads, those memorials would just keep popping up. Yeah. And, you know, you connect with it. You're like, wow, you know, that could be me, you know, anybody, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And um, so that had an impact on me. And um, so I was at the time trying to, it was kind of painterly, kind of slightly stylized, but more like I was really trying to do something realistic mm -hmm. working from photos and and doing like sort of these large scale roadside memorial pieces um that i weatherproofed and installed back onto the roadside because cool. i was like i can't sell these you I know get it. so it's for the family yeah. and some of them disappeared like hoping the family took yeah that little portrait of that memorial and how did you uh waterproof them or weatherproof them um i used like a exterior um, varnish of some yeah. sort, something that was like you know, like a Home Depot, right. like you know, right. gallon and you right. know, varnished them. They they yellowed a little bit, but yeah. What does that feel like when you put something like that and leave it? I mean, you've put a lot of effort. <sighs> you know, it's art, it's creative, but it goes deeper than that. Yeah, it was um, uncomfortable because yeah. you know you, the family members that tend to these things and add more mementos and right. silk flowers and all that. Um, how were they going to feel that somebody painted it? Um, right. And you don't know them. No, no. It's just like some sort of gesture, which I know is kind of strange and kind of dark and, you well, know, but. But not really. It just, in but intuitively, <laughs> that's what I wanted yeah. to just, um, that's the gesture I wanted to make. Yeah. Have you gone back to see if any of those are still there? Um, it, After I had installed them, maybe like a year after, some of them were gone. Yeah. yeah. And. I had one way up north in Jenner, which is on Highway 1. 
And I had a friend that lived, had parents that lived up there and she would report. And so if it's still there, your painting's still there. It is. Oh, that's cool. Have you ever thought I'd like to meet those people? I mean, why not if they wanted to, but I wouldn't really press it because, you know, it's a touchy, sad, you know. Yeah. At some point, though, it maybe doesn't become sad. Yeah. You know, it flips and turns. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the whole, I think the whole thing about those things, that they can turn into something besides sadness and, and uh, you know, but more of a remembrance of the, the you know, the beauty, whatever yeah. that was for them. Yeah. And that's, I think it's a great, great thing. And, and so how long did you do the memorial paintings? I mean, was there a point like, okay, I think I've done this, I've gotten this yeah. out of me? Yeah. I yeah. would think so. Um. Yeah, when I installed my last painting, I felt like that was like I was sort of done and ready to move on. Yeah. And then so what did you move on to? And then I kind of I well that that was like when I graduated from CCA right. and I'm really not a city person. Like I loved it. I loved to be able to see a live show every night if I wanted to and right. all the music and it was really fun and I lived in this warehouse with all these musicians. It right. was wild. But I'm just not a fast paced kind of person. Mm -hmm. And I knew I wanted to go back to Southern California, be closer to my family. I looked on Craigslist and found that you could rent a house in Joshua Tree um, for $600. Mm. And I had $600 to my name as my tax return. (laughs) And I moved to Joshua Tree and rented. Well, actually, I first rented a gallery space and opened a gallery and lived in it. Uh huh. And this was in Joshua Tree. Mm-hmm. This is 2011 or so. Still 2010. 10, okay. Like right when I graduated. Yeah, you went right down there. And I and yeah. So there's like this front space of this of this sort of gallery space, and then like this back area, and it was funky. I mean, it wasn't any right. great way to live, but I you know I tried it. And, Did you sell anything? Yeah, a couple pieces. Yeah, yeah. and we you know only had it open for a few months, and then. Um, my boyfriend at the time was like, we got to, you know, move into a house. Right. <laughs> like, let's, uh-huh. you know, right. so, yeah. And so from there, um, I I guess I was doing something I'd call like, um, it was, I don't know, it was really like sort of dark imagery. It was like a surrealist, like gothic surrealism. Mm. I was really into gothic and renaissance art and caravaggio and you know like that's what was in my mind and i sort of wanted to paint that so Mm -hmm. i was doing like some still lifes that were very dark with like drapery and Mm. fur and blood and it was sort of strange and i didn't sell any of those paintings Uh but it was something i was working through i guess right and then at some point i you know really felt as i learned the desert as i learned how to see the desert i was like this is what i need to be painting yes that you know, just it took it takes time to really see it in the Mojave because you don't have a whole lot of um, vegetation or yeah, it's very little. It's bare. Yeah. So you're really um, reliant on light and color. And when I started to like really see that and my eyes opening to it, I was like, oh, I want to paint this. Mm. And that's what I felt was like my first like on the journey of what I am doing now. Right. And when you first did your first painting of the desert. What was that like? I mean, you know, that had to be kind of uh, an epiphany, I would think, maybe. Yeah. I, I, for some reason, I made it a large painting, mm. large-ish, and it was a big, almost like a cloudscape. Mm-hmm. And I remember struggling so hard with the little creosote bushes right. and the color of the sand. Is it yellow? Is it pink? What right, color right, right, is right. this? Um, it was uncomfortable it was really it was really challenging but i knew something like oh this i just i gotta keep doing this i gotta figure this out right had no concept of like how shadows look on sand and right yeah it's a whole different world Mm -hmm. yeah no it's you know there's uh not a lot of artists that can paint that area actually in my opinion i think um you know maynard dixon did it Mm. he did one called zembrinsky point which was i owned at one time which was a really fantastic painting yeah. Yeah. And then of course Josh Elliott is I've got two of his in my house that are of desert of the uh, Mojave. yeah, of the Mojave of uh, and they're just insane. So to be able to capture that and do it, yeah. I think it takes time. I think you have to be out there 
and absorbing the light and the color. It's really about shades of very subtle shades of color, right? Yeah, um, variation. Mm-hmm. You know, not just purple, but over here maybe a slightly pinkish purple. And, yeah, you know, or white, really, yeah, or cream or whatever. There's a lot of whites. Yeah. That you yeah. look at them and go. Some of them, <laughs> I'm sure you can paint them, and it almost looks like it's snow. Yeah, yeah, depending on just the conditions that right. day. Um, so it is subtle until sunset, and then everything just explodes with color. Yeah. I mean, people ask, like, oh, well, you really exaggerated the pink on those mountains in that painting. I'm like, no, <laughs> that's how it is. It really does turn this bright magenta, you know. It's, right. It's yeah. incredible. And so you're still living in Joshua mm-hmm. Tree? Uh, or... 29 Palms. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know that well. <laughs> I know if you're in the military. Yeah, I was with the Marines too there. So I spent a few stationed months. Were there? Yeah, or? a few months in 29. We called it 29 Stumps is what we called it. But yes, it was uh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Especially yeah. living in a tent with no air conditioning. What season were you? Uh, I was there at least at one time when it was kind of in the uh, so, you know, July-ish, right? Yeah, it was hot. Yeah, I remember. It was very hot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm from the hot. <laughs> so, yeah. But so, how and how, have, how has that been? I mean, because it can get, what, 130 degrees there, probably? I've never, never been there when it's gotten that hot. But at our house, it's about uh, like the highest is close to 120. Yeah, that's still um, hot. Yeah. You just stay inside and yeah. paint. Yeah, when it's hot it. midday, you just stay inside and then, you know, get out and hike later or something if you right. want. But, um, which I mean, it's still hot in your, in my studio, you know, when it's that hot, it's like, okay, it's 90 degrees in here. It's not so bad. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you can't, so well, you still, can't, yeah. I mean, there's a limit. You, from it. Yeah. There's only a limit. You can get it down so far. Air conditionings will only do yeah. so far and when it's 120. But it's so beautiful because that's when monsoon season comes. Yeah. And so you're out there with my camera running out the door and right. you're trying to catch catch material you know right and what so you've done I've, you know i've just seen what you have online but you've done uh, abandoned i guess i assume they're abandoned mm-hmm. maybe they're not abandoned homes but homes um and the desert and cactus and also you've done flowers yeah yeah the and the flowers are completely different tell me about that well um I guess the first flower painting I did was of this um, San Pedro cactus that was growing in my yard. Mm. I still have it now. It's like 15 feet tall. Nice. And it blooms every year, And um, but they bloom at night. Mm. So I wanted to do a nocturne with these blooms and kind of capture that. Right. You know? And that was for like a solo show I was having locally in 29 Palms mm. in 2019. And so I, then I did also a painting, like a sister painting of a Datura, because they bloom at night also. Mm. So I was like, you know, having this conversation. And then about last year, um, I was like more up in the mountains because I um, was like out hiking, getting mm. away from the heat. And there was just this field of hollyhocks just blooming. And, it, you know, they're so tall. Like you can just right. like walk into them. Like right. they're just like, you know, you, you really get surrounded in them. And I thought, you know, this would be an interesting painting, big, you know. So I did a 30 by 30 mm. of, um, of these hollyhocks. I mean, it was like every color you can imagine, you know, just this right. grove. Right, they're gorgeous. Yeah. And so it was sort of um, me trying to be like, okay, can I do similar flower painting to what I did with my, you know, San Pedro blooms? Mm-hmm. But then with color, you know, because my other ones were like blue and white, you know, right. since they're nocturnes. And I'm like what does it feel like to paint a huge pink shape? So that's where I was, you know, that's where my experimentation was. Like, right. how, you know, how do you painting landscape, especially in Mojave, it's like all blue and gold. Right. With the horizon line. Yeah. It's a very, there's just not a lot. There's, I would assume there's not a ton of colors in the palette. Yeah. It's usually, you know, cut down and minimal. So to paint, um, flowers, you know, like, what is green? Like I don't paint <laughs> green ever in the desert, right. you know. So it, it just just my own exploration, of, right? Of doing these shapes in different colors. Yes, and then you, when you did your first one, it was, I assume, quite successful. Yeah, yeah, I got a great response. Um, you know, social media, and it sold at the gallery. I think 
under a month or something. Yeah, that's weeks. good. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Yeah. And so now you've been living out in the Mojave Desert, Joshua Tree, for 12 years, I yes, guess, right? 12 years, yeah. yeah. And what, what do you think you've learned in those 12 years about maybe the desert and, I'm going to give you two questions, but the desert and just being an artist, working on being an artist? Well, as far as the desert goes, what I've learned is that it's um, always changing. Mm. I mean, this landscape, as much as it seems so ancient and, you know, rock solid, you know, right. it's all these boulders. It's it's really not. You right. know, the conditions and the just the way it looks is never the same. You know, I can go back and paint a mountain a hundred times and it would look different just depending on where the sun's rotating mm. and just clouds. And, you know, so I feel like it's very much alive even though it's so bare of vegetation and so, um, you know, these formations are so ancient, but I feel like it's always different. It's always yeah. still alive. It's, yeah. it's, it's growing, it's breathing, um, and supporting me, you know, it, it really, right. in so many ways, this is the landscape I live in and this is the landscape where I, um, can make monetary profit from. Yeah. And found yeah. your voice. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, and it it's that's where you found I it. Spend a lot of time, not just out my front door, but I I hike all the time looking for new things to see, you know, and the animals and all that. It just feels like it's a part of me. Yeah, have you painted animals at all? Have you done anything like that? Um, no, not too much. I actually, um, I just painted a saguaro with a little bird on top because today, I mean, or uh, last... no, like recently, yeah. Uh, that was like my first, like, oh, that was my first wildlife yeah. painting. But no, I haven't ventured to painting animals too yeah. much. Yeah. What did you think about painting a saguaro, by the way? Uh, they're complicated. They are. That's they're, the right answer. Yeah. They are, um, the way they reflect light, you know, is this green? No, it's purple. You know, like, mm -hmm. what color is this? Right. Yeah. And they're not, you know, <laughs> I see these people and they have them like stick figures and they're so different. And yeah. Un, you know, they're not symmetrical. They have no. all sorts of oddities and damage and, yeah. you know, but they're also just incredibly compelling, I think. Yeah. I mean, they're great to paint, um, but also just to be in their presence. I mean, these yeah. towering creatures, you know, it's yeah. just like, wow. I would think energy. you would feel that just because you live in Joshua Tree. I mean, they have that kind of same sensibility, I think, in a weird way, don't they? The Joshua Trees, yeah, yeah the, they are so bizarre. Yeah. They really are. It's funny because I don't paint a whole lot of Joshua Trees. Yeah. I don't know if it's just because I'm around them so much or something, but, um, you know, they're, but they're complicated. I guess maybe because they, they don't carry as much color as i'm looking for yeah. now they're just gray trees with a little bit of green yeah and, yeah i would see i would think those would be very difficult to paint mm -hmm. yeah yeah not many people paint them either <laughs> no not too many yeah. yeah a lot of people try sororos some more successful than others <laughs> yeah <laughs> again yeah. you know it's a hard it's a hard image to paint <laughs> yeah. so okay so you've clearly found where you're probably going to be forever and maybe not uh, i'm open yeah yeah okay yeah i'm not i'm not too too concrete and i've lived there for a long time and i will always yeah. return to that desert for right. inspiration but i'm not feeling like i'm sat there forever yeah so you, something else could excite you and go mm -hmm. okay let me go try this yeah if i really want to absorb another landscape and right. understand i mean i mean i could devote my life to painting the Mojave, but I don't see any reason why I'm only alive once. I got to learn other places. Yeah. Have you painted the four corners or done anything like that? No, I would love to. Yeah. I mean, or I've, have you seen Canyon de Chez or no. Monument Valley or any of those? I haven't seen oh, that so yeah. Yet. Oh my gosh. That's yeah, a whole other thing oh, to yeah. explore. Life was about to change for you when you see those two. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's the desert, but it's different. It's a different sensibility in Utah and all that area. Yeah. You know. Utah, I've spent some time in, yeah. in, you know, those red rocks and cliffs. And How about Moab? Have you spent time there? I haven't been to Moab. Oh, yeah. Gosh. I know it's a sin being no. a landscape painter in my no. field, but. No, you'll, I mean, you'll absorb it immediately because that's what you, I mean, you've lived a dozen mm -hmm. years in the desert and 
painting is probably, I think, one of the most difficult uh, deserts to paint, quite frankly. I think it is the most difficult, in, at least in the United States. I can't say for other places, but um, it's, a diff it's a difficult yeah. one. You have to yeah. look hard. Yeah, that writer does it in Dubai. He's able to do a similar kind of desert, and he captures it insanely. Another guy I represent. <laughs> and, yeah, he's. do you know him? Yeah. I've seen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you could move. That's interesting. And so <laughs> that's fine. Just stay in that four corners area. <laughs> Perhaps. Yeah, you yeah. don't know. Well, that's right. You only live once. Yeah, I'm just, I'm too curious. Yeah. To s just buckle down and do one thing. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I want to see things. I want the landscape to speak to me. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I, clearly that's what it does because I can look at it and go, yeah, <laughs> maybe that's part of why I'm so, was so immediately all in is I can see that you can get the landscape. I see that you have it. You know, you've captured exactly what it is. You know? Thank you. Yeah. And I think that I do think you have to live or spend time. You don't have to live, live like you do, but you have to spend time in that area to be able to understand it. Yeah. You yeah. can't, at least for me, you know, you can't just see it, take a picture and leave. Right. I mean, you got to let it absorb into you and right. understand how hot it was that day or the sounds. And I mean, it's for me, it's the smell. Yeah. All of that. It, right. it helps Creative inform side. what I'm doing. Yeah. You know? Of course it does. And so now you've been doing this again over 10 years, 12 years as a professional artist. I would say that's a true. Would you say that's, that's true? Yeah. Right? So you show now in Scottsdale in a gallery and then another one in. A small gallery in Taos. In Taos. Yeah. And then I also show on Western Gallery, which is just an online gallery. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So how has it been to try to make a living as an artist? It's It's hard. Yeah. yeah, it's hard, you know, you have, to, um, you have to trust what you're doing and trust in yourself and trust at some point, you know, it's it's going to develop. It's going to um, happen. And not just like with money, but even your skill level and, you know, just really have to stay on it and just be like, no. And, you know, for me, it's like an inner feeling like, no, I know there's something I'm trying to do. I'm trying to still capture that thing and i just right. will keep working until i find it and i might never find it right probably keep trying to look for that thing until i think all I good go. artists do that though okay I think, yeah, yeah i think that's the the exactly what the best artists do is they go i'm not there yet yeah i gotta keep going yeah. i'm not there it's not i'm just i'm close maybe some days some days but yeah i mean every one of them i don't care who they are i think they feel that way they all do all the good ones I can, you know, I've heard them all say it, you know, ah, it's not, that's not, yeah, good, you know, there's the thing, there's <laughs> the thing there that you're trying to reach. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think if you feel like you have reached it, maybe you're done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, if there's nothing more to learn, then right. what's the point? Yeah. That's, I mean, and that's what it is. Have you worked with any other artists, like you know, as far as uh, mentorship or, or you teaching on your end, maybe even? Nope. No. No. Um, no. I haven't been teaching art since I was doing it with kids right. when I, in my 20s. Um, I'm very reclusive in the desert. I have my studio and yeah. I stay there all year. You know, yeah. Sorry, yeah. friends. You know, Sometimes I, I, have to, I have to paint, have to paint. Like, yeah. That's the yeah, understanding yeah. with my family even. It's yeah, like, you're an introvert and that's what you like to do. Yeah. I get it. And that, yeah. I think, also makes it somewhat difficult sometimes to get to those next levels sometimes is because you really want to paint and you want to be in your own world creating and it's hard to go out and, you know, find, you know, galleries like this one. I mean, I don't think you came in going, I want to try to show with Mark Sublet's not as my gallery. That wasn't my intention. No, I don't and think I, so at I, all. I, um, I really just wanted to see some Maynard Dixon. Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, I thought like if it would be great to meet you or whatever, but right. I, I'd, um, I'm a little shy, so I wouldn't. I don't yeah. know if I felt bold enough to be like, "Hi, you know, yeah. this is who yeah. I am." You know, I think it's important for those artists that are out there listening that if you feel like that's the case, and I understand it because I have that same kind of tendencies myself, but you have to just do it. Yeah. And the fact you came in and did it and were open 
you know, and when it, you know, when it happens, it happens, but you do have to make those attempts. You do have to do those things or do, and do social media and, and you have your own, uh, Instagram mm-hmm. and it give us the name of the Instagram account. The handle is, uh, Whitney G dot art. Whitney G dot art. Okay. Mm-hmm. So everybody go out there and, <laughs> and do you have a website too? I do. My website is wit. Of the West. The Wit. Wit, like Whitney. Yeah. So just abbreviated Wit of the West. Okay. All the other dot coms with um, my name already okay. taken. Yeah. So okay. I had to come up with something a little yeah. more. Yeah. Well, you probably about. spend most of your time on doing it on Instagram. Yeah. 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 Um, gaining a following there. And um, it's fun. You know, it's great to put images out there. And there's so many other great artists that are right. on there that you can see their work. They're seeing yours right. and you can engage. I always say, like, could you imagine if we had Instagram when P- Picasso was making work and seeing his studio process? I mean, it'd be wild, you know, any of the, right, you know, from, so it's really a great tool that as um, just even people that appreciate art, that we can see yeah. our artists making work. I mean, we're they're living and yeah. creating stuff that's going to be historical and you're seeing the process right there. That's right. It's really great. No, it's a game changer. Mm-hmm. As our podcast, I think, to some extent, mm-hmm. because you get to see the journey, you know, it's not, and it's not always easy. Sometimes you're living in a $600 uh, a week, a month <laughs> place selling your own art in the middle of the desert, yeah. trying to make a go of it. Yeah. And, um, you know, it doesn't happen overnight, even though it may have happened, seems like it does to other people. It's not, <laughs> you know, I'm sure things will, I hope things will change for you too, just with us representing you and you get more exposure and people will see, you know, they'll see what I see. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they will. Well, thank you. <laughs> and if they don't, well, you're missing out. That's all I got to <laughs> say. That's all I have to say. Thank um, you. So any words that you might want to tell other artists that, you know, I know it's kind of been a whirlwind hour or two here, but. Just stick with it if you love it. If you really know it's in your heart and you just really, it's what you want. That's what you want in your life. Just don't let anything stop you from doing it. Yeah, I agree. I think that's true for everything. I think art is just maybe a little harder than others. Yeah. Honestly. I yeah. Do. It's a hard one, but you. It is a hard one. Just, just believe in it. Yeah. Yeah, you don't do it for the money. No, no, no. <laughs> you do it maybe for a ham sandwich sometimes. But, yeah, but you do it for your heart. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, I'm super thrilled to have you as uh, in my gallery. I don't know when I'm going to get art. We'll talk about that. Okay. It'll happen when it happens. I understand it takes a while. To, you're not a machine. But uh, I'm just thrilled that you came into the gallery and I got to see your work. I was like, you know, that just doesn't happen. But when it does, it's a miracle. I feel the same way. I'm very thrilled. Yeah. Very, um, very thankful. Yeah. No, I am too. Yeah. No, it's a miracle to see that. Yeah. And, and, and the fact I didn't even, I don't think I'd ever seen your work out there. Maybe I had and went, oh, that's great. And just, but the fact of the matter is there is a lot of people out on Instagram and there's so much, right? So it makes the difference for you to actually get out and meet people and do the things and, you know, go to events and those kind of things because it does make a difference, Yeah, you know, because there's something about that still human contact Mm -hmm. um, that makes people stop and go, oh, yeah. So I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my son saw it immediately and handed it to me and I'm like, oh, yeah. I'll be anxious to see what he has to say about, you know, how fast I ask you to. <laughs> um, and I'll have to tell him that doesn't really happen like that very often. That's a rare thing. But when it happens, don't be afraid not to jump to as a dealer. Don't be afraid not to go. OK, I believe what I just saw. And I see and I look and I didn't look at one painting. I looked at everything that you were doing. Yeah. It was like, let me see that one. Let me see that one. Let me see that one. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Look at this. <laughs> look at those flowers. <laughs> so I think we'll, this will be very fun. I'm excited. And thank you for taking the time to do the podcast too. I know that's kind of a big ask when, you know, you're not expecting anything like that. Nothing like that. And but, nor was I, yeah. I had to cancel my haircut, which, yeah. you, <laughs> which I need a haircut. I know. But it was like, Hey, let's just do this. It's meant to be. I think that's kind of what it is. Sometimes you got that's meant to be. So I yeah. think that's how I'm saying it. So yeah, me too. 
And when he asked me if I want to do a podcast, I was going, oh, yes, I have to say yes. <laughs> yeah, that's hard too, especially if you don't like doing those kind of things. You know, I think it's harder to do, but it's important. And I'm glad you did it. And I think people will really enjoy it. I know I did. Just yeah, hearing we got to, you got to know about me a little bit. I do, a lot of bit, actually. Okay. I get the, I understand. I know you're all in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I know when people also do a degree and get that done. That's meanless. That generally, they are all in, all in. You don't have to have it. I have a lot of artists that are self-taught and they're fantastic. But when I hear the struggle, and I know, you know, I mean, anybody who goes to the desert in Death Valley and paints in that area, you're probably pretty much in. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, plain air painting in Death Valley is definitely super hard. Yeah, super difficult. Yeah, and it's not a subject matter most people want to tackle on many levels. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I was there in spring and drove around for way too long looking for a place, you know, spot to paint, like when in the in the morning, you know, and the light was changing and then I found my spot, got out of the car and painted it. It was like a hundred degrees, just dripping sweat, but trying to get it in, you know, right. cause, cause you have to, Yeah, you know, you just have to. Yeah. And you'll do the plain air pieces and then you take them home and do studio pieces on. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. You, plain air is. Um, I'm still sharpening my skills with that. Um, it's fun. Yeah. Like I love being outdoors and then painting. It's like the two right. mix. It's like I, I love it. It's, yeah. You have to be so present. Yes. You have to just give it everything. Nothing else in the world matters. And I love like coming out of that being like, whew, you know, yeah. that, that was a, that was an experience. And then you use those for your yeah. big paintings. Yeah, yeah. I'll have them, um, you know, and I do photo references also for the studio. But yeah, my plein air yeah. informs you know, how that felt, what the color is like, yeah. what the light was like that day. Yeah. Yeah. I think most of my artists, not there's a few that just do plain air like Matt Smith, but most of them do it for reference and for just what you said, fun. Yeah. You know, I've seen you know, John and Terry Moyers just, I mean, eating it up, mm -hmm. you know, just having a blast. <laughs> Same with Glenn Dean, Josh Elliott, and Logan Hajaz, eating it up, you know, just having a blast yeah ray roberts i mean i could go on i think all of them actually you know it it allows them to and i'm speaking from just seeing what i've watched them do it yeah it allows them to rebalance and to see things in a new light sure yeah yeah, yeah. It, it it really does um give you information yeah. on how to tackle a landscape it really yep. does yeah well Thank you so much. Thank I you, look Mark. forward to seeing your first painting in my gallery. <laughs> Until then, you can go to her other galleries and see them and online, but uh, it won't be long. Hopefully, we'll have some work at Medicine Man Gallery, and I'm thrilled to get some desert scenes from the Mojave because it's one of my favorite. <laughs> it's just terrific. All right. Yeah, thank Thanks. you. All right. Let's, we'll go... Uh, Talk some more after about what happens now. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All Mike. right. Thank you very much. Great. All right. Whitney. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm so excited. That was fun. It's fun, right? Yeah.